Quand on s'intéresse au Talking about sustainable development, it is always very important to talk about towns because uh, more than 50% of the world population lives in town, and therefore towns are where people live. They are a habitat, and the uh, this trend is going to uh, continue because the forecasts announced that 6 billion people will live in town in 2050 versus 3 billion in, uh, um, outside of towns. This means that a lot of pressure is put on resources. Uh, and at the same same time, urban areas also uh, are where administrative power is concentrated. They have room for maneuver regarding uh, land development, and there is a matter of equity of distribution between the land area and urban area. Now, the stakes associated with towns are very numerous, and in summary, we could divide them in two two groups: the stakes that we can call internal stakes, if we consider the town as an environment, a habitat, and the second type of stakes are external or global stakes if we were to consider the town in the environment or the town in the biosphere. Let us take the first series of stakes if we consider the town as an environment, a living environment. The first theme is that of urban metabolism. Urban metabolism is the word that refers to the flow of energy and material necessary for towns to operate. These flows are obviously quite uh, substantial, and the matter of uh, urban metabolism is associated with dematerialization. How do we make sure that towns consume less energy and materials? We have to ask ourselves questions about land man uh, urban management and planning and uh, services. Now, metabolism is also uh, combined with uh, a different perspective. Uh, a town could also be considered as uh, a source of resources. Normally, we think that towns are where materials and resources are wasted, but towns could be used as a way to uh, give more value to some resources. And another stake uh, is uh, nature in town, urban biodiversity and living uh, beings and plants in town. Urban nature is, uh, first of all, due to the fact that many people live in town, and therefore the amenities they have access to in the urban environment must be improved so that a town uh, can be lived in. And nature is something that makes living in town more pleasant. In town, anyway, there are also uh, many different uh, species uh, living, constituting urban biodiversity and urban biodiversity must be stabilized and even developed. Therefore, the question of animals and plants living in town drives us back to the to town as a uh, living environment that can be treated in a more naturalistic way. On the field, this can be materialized by uh, green and blue threads connecting all urban ecosystems, and there are quite a few of those, although they have very small sizes, connect them between them so that biodiversity can be sponsored, specific and genetic biodiversity, and also that the presence of nature can be encouraged because nature can be considered as a uh, an amenity that makes living in town more pleasant. Third theme. There are environmental inequalities and ecological inequalities in town. Not all town dwellers have access to the same amenities. Not all town dwellers are exposed the same way to disturbance, pollution. Therefore, it is also necessary to work on this to improve inequalities uh, for town dwellers. I have talked about an ordinary town, but there are also events that are not qualified as normal events, but rather qualify as extraordinary events, such as heat waves, storms, floods. This is something that is going to uh, develop and increase because of climate changes. Therefore, it is important that towns get ready to face such extraordinary events. And 
because we're talking about risks, this is nothing, nothing new. But it is the way we approach the risks that is changing. We are now talking about resilience, and resilience is something that will help us connect together normal life, normal events, and extraordinary events. Resilience is the capacity for a system, for a living environment, to recover its normal functioning after a trauma, for instance, a flood. Now, resilience is something that must be developed beforehand, and it shows how much, how important it is to get ready for extraordinary events, and also how it is important to get ready to face the post-trauma period. Now, these four themes are essential for those who consider towns as a living environment, but towns also belong to the biosphere. The uh, urban operation does not stop at the borders. Part of the uh, town metabolism is uh, externalized. Towns depend on uh, goods and resources coming from outside of town, such as food and raw materials. This means that two more themes are associated. First of all, the environmental print. The environmental print of a town can be found everywhere across the world and not just in town. It must be identified, it must be quantified possibly, because it shows that most of the time the impact of a town will be outside the town's border more than inside the town's border. And there is also the matter of solidarity between the generations. Towns now are accumulating a debt towards the territories where they are located, and we are thinking in terms of the relationship they could develop with the territories in order to exchange services and so that they could benefit from each other. The stakes uh, of uh, sustainable towns are developed on different scales and systems. Nowadays, towns are not sustainable, far from being sustainable. And it is absolutely essential that we address the question.